I say the whole world must learn of our peaceful ways. By force. In this video guys, I'm going to show you how you can use the power of friendship to accomplish Mehmet's ambition by 1498, and how you can do so without completely ruining your country, so that you can continue your campaign while owning a massive and wealthy empire. The 1.36 Byzantium update has radically changed the requirements to form the Roman Empire, and also the requirements to get the Mehmet's ambition achievement. You no longer need to own specific provinces like York, London, and Tunis. You also don't have to own entire regions like Iberia, France, and Italy. Instead, we need to own 425 provinces from these regions before the year 1500, either as ourself or in our core aelids. This means that we can supplement lands from one region for lands in another, for example taking some South German lands to avoid having to take more expensive provinces, allowing us to focus on sheer number of provinces taken in our later wars. The basis of this strategy is that as early as possible we're going to divide up the world into friends and food. Friends are any country that we're confident that we can diplo-vassalize, either through the Muslim religion swap strategy or by getting plus 100 relations from releasing a nation. At the start of our campaign, our friends are going to be Arabia, the Maghrebi minor nations, three of the Turkish Beyliks, and from the Balkans, Albania and Herzegovina. If we're able to keep our aggressive expansion down, we can also try to diplo-vassalize Italian miners after they leave the HRE. Everyone else is pure protein. <sighs> For our opening moves, we're going to hire a second general and attach him to our second army, which we will start moving south towards Athens. Next, we will send diplomats to improve relations with Burgundy and Albania, and we're going to send a guarantee to the Levantine nation Aniza. I'd like to give a big shout out to the playmaker for developing the opening strategies we will be combining for this achievement. For our estates, we are going to be giving the clergy oversight, religious diplomats, and we're also going to be giving them established religious schools and invite religious scholars. This will mean that inviting a religious scholar won't cost us admin points. For the scholar, we're going to take the Hanbali guy for the aggressive expansion reduction. Make sure that you actually invite him in your religion tab or you won't get the modifier. For the nobility, we're just going to grant supremacy for the loyalty boost and in case we need a reminder to take estate missions. For the burghers, we're going to get prestige, loans, and free enterprise. For the dimmi, we're going to give dimmi contributions, letting us scrape a little bit of extra money out of them before we reset their loyalty. Finally, for the janissaries, we will give janissary loyalty. Next, we're going to summon the diet. Our goal is to try to fire one of the nobility missions that gives us extra diplomatic reputation, as this will improve our ability to vassalize our neighbors. Sadly, we did not get any such events this game. Later on when our economy is starting to struggle, we're going to be looking at the merchant's development missions, which will give us free money. Now for our advisors. Hire the half-price natural scientist if he's available. If not, just take a level 1 admin guy. For diplomacy, it's worth re-rolling for a diplo rep advisor. We'll leave our military slot empty until we can get urban from our missions. We'll also leave our focus on military for now, since we'll be making extensive use of barrage assaulting to finish these opening wars as quickly as possible. Take a quick look at your mercenaries tab. If you see one of the smaller companies with a strong siege general, at least three pips, hire them. Otherwise, just take the free company. We'll link them up with our cannons to handle most of our sieges to conserve manpower in the early game. You'll also want to hire some boats and delete all of your forts to save money. Take a look at who Burgundy and Poland are rivaling and try to match them for some free relations. For now, we'll sit tight and wait for the Varna Crusade and urban events to fire, letting us hire our half-price advisor and click our missions to get free cannons and claims on Byzantium. Go ahead and start your war with Byzantium as soon as you can. In my game, they didn't come with any allies. If they do, your best hope is they bring in Serbia, since you can release Montenegro, who will be very easy to vassalize, but this is not critical. Go ahead and barrage assault Constantinople. We'll hire an admiral and park our navy outside the city, Byzantium's navy is split up at this point, so you should have no trouble with these engagements. We want to fight their navy at every opportunity to try to steal a few ships. While you're fighting Byzantium, use your free diplomat to go and proclaim guarantees on all of the minor nations neighboring the Mamluks. Then, guarantee the rest of Arabia, the Maghrebi miners, Granada, and the two friendly Beyliks, Ramazan and Dulkadir, as well as Sinkaifa. Particularly, we need Aniza to survive since they will let us snake our vassal chain into Arabia, so it is a good idea to also guarantee any of Aniza's allies. Likewise, Yemen is on the cusp of refusing our vassalization, so we want to prevent them from getting any larger. Our goal is to freeze these regions in place so that the nations will be small and easy to diplo-vassalize. In the peace deal with Byzantium, take everything and click the decision to make Constantinople your new capital. 
make sure not to click the missions just yet. We're also not going to core anything, since we want the unrest and free actions in these provinces. Next, we're going to take on Epirus. In my game, they allied Ragusa, which was very good, because it let us release Dalmatia for a free reconquest on Venice. Other common allies are the Pope and Genoa. These make for good targets to release nations and cancel their subjects, allowing us more potentially free vassals later on. Now that we've wrapped up our war with Epirus and Ragusa, we can release Dalmatia. We'll throw a missionary onto one of our newly conquered Orthodox lands, and release the country of Mentashe as our vassal. This will make Orthodoxy the majority religion in our country. You can also exploit development before releasing, to get some extra cash or manpower. Now when we wait a month, we will have Orthodox rebels who we can accept demands, changing our state religion to Orthodox Christianity. Our goals while we're Orthodox are to ally and royal marry Burgundy to get the inheritance later on. We'll also ally and royal marry Poland to try to stave off the inevitable coalitions. And we can diplo-vassalize Albania and Herzegovina to manage our aggressive expansion in the Balkans. Burgundy should be friendly by now, but if they're not, go ahead and scornfully insult one of their rivals. You should be able to ally them and then royal marry them. Now set to work pumping up relations with Albania and Herzegovina. We will repay our burger loans by debasing our currency and giving monopoly privileges so that we can spend influence on them. We are losing 9 diplomatic points a month maintaining our guarantees, so you want to get their relations up to 190 as soon as possible. For Albania, we will give away their core province, removing the owned core debuff and giving us an extra 25 relations. This will also remove orthodox development, making Sunni the majority faith again. After we've set up our diplomacy with Burgundy, Poland, and the Balkans, click the decision to flip back to Sunni. This will give us stability and an extra 50 relations with all Muslim countries. This is how we're going to vassalize an enormous amount of land for free. Once we've flipped Sunni, find a non-nationalist rebels province with greater than minus 60 unrest and put a missionary on it. We'll then exploit development and give away one of Kandar's provinces and accept demands to become orthodox again. We can release Achaia and flip back to Sunni, giving us another 50 relations. Next, give the other province back to Kandar, flip Orthodox, release Morea, and flip back to Sunni for another 50 relations. Now we'll give away one or two provinces to Mentishe and flip back to Orthodox. For the final Sunni flip, we're going to click the mission, giving us extra development in Constantinia and reducing unrest in Greece. We'll become Sunni for the final time, giving us plus 3 stability and a bonus of 200 relations with all Muslim countries. Before choosing religious schools, we will be giving the ulema the invite scholar and religious schools privileges, choosing Hanbali and inviting the scholar. Then we will become Hanbali to stack a minus 20% aggressive expansion reduction for the next 20 years. When we take the Ottoman government reform, it will recreate the Janissaries estate and give them crown land. Therefore, before we take the reform, we can give away one of the crown land's privileges. You could go with one of the mana privileges, but Mehmet Fatih is such a beast and we will be running level 3 advisors eventually anyway. Our real choke points early game are manpower and money, so it will give conscript the Dimi privilege for an extra 15% manpower in our orthodox provinces, as well as Dimi autonomy. This will boost religious unity, making improving stability easier, which will come in handy when we start truce breaking. Take the Ottoman government reform and give the Janissaries the loyalty privilege, then seize land. Now that you've taken the Ottoman government reform, you're allowed to establish Aelids. If you didn't know, Aelids are a special subject type that do not take up a relation slot, but they can only join your wars if called in with favors, and they cannot be integrated. However, if their opinion is high and their liberty desire is low, they can be made core Aelids. These can't join your wars, but they pay you money and manpower, increase your max manpower and force limit, and they can't see each other for liberty desire calculations. Core Aelids also count towards owning land for this achievement, while all other subject types do not. First off, we will promote each of our vassals to Aelids and start sending alliances out to any Muslim countries that would accept vassalization. Then we rein in our Aelids to keep overall liberty desire down and start vassalizing Dulkadir and Ramazan. Each vassal counts towards the distance modifier. Once we have Dulkadir, we are close enough to vassalize Aniza. Aniza will let us vassalize all of Arabia, so it was critical that we kept them alive from the start. Let's take a look at the power of friendship.
Once we've extended our vassal snake far enough south to ally southern Arabia, it's time to go to war again, since we can vassalize any ally while being at war as long as we don't call them in. Our next target is going to be the Mamluks. I played around with a few strategies, including waiting until they've annexed Syria so that we can do a reconquest war. I don't recommend this. Instead, we will take them out early, conquering Syria and releasing it as vassals. Now that we've aelitted Arabia, aggressive expansion in the east may as well not exist. We will also co-belligerent Karaman to take their provinces. In my experience, they're a pain in the neck to try to ail it, requiring too much trust and provinces to give back, so we're just going to conquer them. In my game, I was really aggressive with my barrage assaults. I wanted to get into Mamluk Egypt as quickly as possible, and Syria is a massive roadblock. We will take all of Syria in this war and release Lebanon and Syria to make it easier to ail it and rein them in individually. At this point, we were only missing Najd from Arabia, who is stuck in a ridiculous war against Shirvan. We were making positive diplomana again, and we can shift our national focus there. You're going to want to get through influence ideas as quickly as possible for the insane money and force limit contributions from all of our Aelids. Next, we attacked Cyprus. Our only goal is to white piece the Mamluks to reset their truce timer to five years. Since Cyprus was allied to Genoa, and I didn't want the war to drag out, I simply white pieced them. Now it's time to go after the Balkans. Our first target is going to be Venice. We need to have 20 Balkan provinces in order to get a free Ottoman conquest CB on Hungary through our mission tree. This will make them our Aelet immediately. While we're at war with Venice, we also declare on Bosnia and Serbia to full annex both. We take all of the Balkan provinces we need and force Venice to release several minor nations. If we managed our AE better, we could have diplo vassalized these guys later, but this ended up not panning out. We will piece out these wars back to back for a lot of aggressive expansion. We absolutely do not want Hungary joining a coalition since they are our next target. We release our newly conquered territories as vassals, click our mission push into the north, and declare on Hungary with the Ottoman conquest CB, calling in Poland and Burgundy. We'll just spend some time capturing the two forts in the south, and then shift our army back east to fight the Mamluks for their Ottoman conquest CB. Our allies are more than enough to handle Hungary in the background. Once our truce expires, we will take our Mamluk defeat mission and declare war. The way this works is we need 90% war score and to hold Cairo. After three years, an event will fire, making the Mamluks our Aelid, which we can turn into a core Aelid immediately using our missions. We peace out Hungary, making them our Aelid, and increasing our aggressive expansion dramatically. Before any coalitions form, we will declare war on Naples. You will want to have a claim on them, which you should get through an event. If not, start fabricating on them around when you are fighting the Balkan Wars. While we're at war, we get extra relations with our vassals, making Serbia loyal enough to be Aelided and reined in. The Mamluks are just a waiting game once we've sieged them down, so we can move our armies to focus on our Mediterranean goals. We'll take the two tips of the boot from Naples, bringing us close enough to Aragon to fabricate on, and this keeps Naples under 150 development. The Ottomans have another broken mechanic called Justify Invasion, where as long as you border a country with less than 150 development, you can get an Ottoman Conquest CB to Aelit them in one war. I made a slight misstep by not attacking Aragon for Malta immediately. In your runs, you should secure Malta as soon as possible for the Great Project, which at max strength gives minus 15% war score cost versus other religions. Next, we'll set up our armies to attack Tunis. The Mamluk Collapse event fires, giving us all of Egypt and the Holy Cities, and letting us click our next mission, giving us Ottoman conquests on Tunis, who has expanded massively. We also see that Granada sadly got eaten, but on the upside, Morocco lost a war to their vassals, and you know what that means. More friends. After wrapping up our war with Tunis and aeolitting the Moroccan miners, we now have the majority of the Eastern Roman Empire secured before 1470. Portugal managed to take some land from Morocco, and England, for whatever reason, refused to join, meaning our next war was in Iberia. Over time, we have been putting any extra income we have into building up heavies and galleys, and our navy has become unstoppable. In the meantime, we should also declare war on QQ, who are weak enough that we only needed to commit a few stacks towards sieging them down. By this point, our diplo rep and economic base was also strong enough to diplo vassalize Mushasha and Baluchistan. We also saw our truce expire with Naples, and before they could join a coalition, we attacked them with the Ottoman Invasion CB. In the peace deal, we took North African provinces and Granada for ourselves, as well as key provinces throughout Iberia to release as vassals later. We also took a province in southern Portugal that we could have used to get an Ottoman conquest CB, which would have been ideal, but by that time we had more pressing concerns. 
After the war, we released a bunch of vassals in North Africa and Iberia, keeping Granada so that we could invest in Alhambra for the Diplo rep, vassal income, and critically, the 5% admin efficiency at max level. Of course, we are going deep into debt to finance these. By 1472, we are in a good spot. We have all of North Africa as loyal Aelids, and all but a few provinces in Anatolia left to conquer. We own all of the Balkans south of Croatia, have Hungary as a core Aelid, and footholds in Iberia and an angry Aelid in Naples. However, we also have an enormous coalition, with our former ally Poland turning on us and joining the coalition. At this point, I tried attacking the White Sheep to use the Release Subjects exploit. However, we didn't have enough relations to easily resubjugate all of our release targets, and the aggressive expansion reduction was just a drop in the bucket compared to how much we had accumulated. It was here that I decided. The die had been cast. The world would learn the power of friendship by force. Our first step was identifying cracks in the coalition. Our two targets were France, via their alliance with Scotland, and Poland, with their alliance with Croatia, who we had a truce with. We declared a no-CV war on Scotland, who was now a two-province minor in the Orkneys, our primary focus was France, who we sieged down and took a handful of provinces to release Gascony, Toulouse, and Provence. Then we invaded Scotland. They ended up being outside of our coring range, so we took them as a vassal, which gave us a free reconquest CB on England. In the meantime, our truces with Austria and Croatia expired. We declared on Austria with the Ottoman conquest CB from justifying invasions, and Croatia for regular conquest. This led us to piece out Poland for their Wallachian lands, which are not required for the achievement, but we do have a mission to take Romanian provinces that gives us some nice bonuses. Now, I don't actually recommend using the Aelit War too much on countries like Austria. They will hate your guts due to all of the aggressive expansion, which will make them difficult to rein in. I was eventually able to get around this by forcing religion, royal marrying, placating local rulers, and trading favors for trust, but it came down to the wire, so it might be easier to simply conquer and release. We take all of Croatia and release them as an Aelit. By religiously releasing and feeding our vassals, we almost never have to deal with overextension or coring our provinces. This also means that all of our rebels are concentrated around Anatolia and a few lands in Iberia. While doing a few mop-up wars against the White Sheep and Corfu, the Burgundian inheritance fired, giving us all of Burgundy and their Dutch subjects as our personal union. This kicked off the Burgundian Inheritance HRE incident, which meant that the new emperor, Volgast, and their main allies, Brandenburg, Bohemia, and Denmark-Norway, would attack me. I moved my troops to the border with Bohemia in preparation for war, which would be a perfect opportunity to get a few more nations out of the coalition. While we were fighting Volgast, a few of our truces expired, allowing attacks of opportunity against Castile, Florence, and Crete. Okay, so at this point, OBS decided to declare war on me using the April Fool's Joke CB and recorded my desktop for five hours instead of my game. Thankfully, I had backups of several key points using PDX Unlimited. This tool was honestly a lifesaver for this run, since it made saves go- I mean, using Mehmet's totally in-game Bites the Dust trait to rewrite any timelines that resulted in fate catching up with him. Now, remember that only core Aelids and owned territories count towards the achievement, so we need Burgundy integrated. The Duchess of Burgundy dies event happens with a mean time of 15 years and requires Burgundy to be at peace. When it does, their personal union major partner can kiss a horse and integrate all of their lands immediately. I used Unlimiter to replay the year 1486 over and over to minimize the time spent without conquering anything until we got the horse event. This is absolutely an exploit, and you can get mad at me in the comments, or you can try it for yourself and see how it makes this run much, much easier. Now we had everything we needed to do a full sprint towards the finish line, except for that pesky coalition. In order to dissolve it, I did everything I could to appear too strong for them. I allied Muscovy, Bamanis, and Oirat, as well as hiring every mercenary company I could. We were losing 500 ducats a month, but it paid off, and within a few months the coalition had dissolved. At this point, one run from the next will be completely diverged, so I can only give general, strategic tips. The main goal is to plan to always be at war, except for a few brief moments of peace where you release new subjects and give them away newly conquered lands to manage your overextension and to save your admin points for stability increases. Now that the coalition is out of the way, we can begin our full rampage towards the finish line. Starting with Northern Italy, we declare war on everyone except for France's allies, co-belligerenting as many countries as we can. We also declare war on Malta to finally get their great project, as well as Cyprus. Getting to the finish line for this achievement requires truce breaking. However, we still want to minimize the number of times we have to do this. 
Our truce with France was ending shortly, so as an appetizer, we truce broke Castile, who had unfortunately gotten the Iberian wedding. We peaced out just before declaring on France so we could feed more land to our aelids. We also needed to start thinking about taking out Britain, so we started scoping out their alliances. Brittany could be co-belligerented to conquer, however Sweden would be a pain. Our first goal in an England war would be to land on Stockholm and force them to break their alliance with England. We ended up being at war with France and England simultaneously, which was possible because we had no more conquests to do in the east, and we could just park a few stacks in Anatolia for rebel suppression. France ended up being allied to many of the countries we wanted to eat, letting us co-belligerent Savoy, Venice, and Switzerland for more free land. Remember, we only need provinces in these regions. This is our kill zone. Provinces we take in one region mean fewer provinces that we would need to take in others, provinces like London or Lisbon that would require more war score than several smaller provinces combined. Around this time, our core on Malta finished, letting us go deep into debt to pump the monument up to level 3, giving us our minus 15% war score cost versus all of our Christian foes. This let us take all of Venice, minus Venezia itself, and huge chunks of Switzerland and Savoy from which we released the three leagues and Saluzzo. Important to keep in mind, only ever feed land which your subject has cores on if that province is in the HRE, otherwise the emperor can demand it back from your subject. The year was 1494, and we had truce broken Castile, France, and Britain. We made sure to piece all of them out simultaneously in the last war so that we could release more aelids, Brittany, Northumberland, Wales, Cornwall, Champagne, etc., and feed them as much as we could. This meant that we only had very little overextension, allowing us to increase stability for only 77 admin. The rules for truce breaking are pretty simple. You lose 5 stability and gain 5 war exhaustion. As long as you're at minus 3 stab, you can't declare any new truce break wars, so we invest just 1 point into stability for each war and stay at negative 2. Because we don't have that many recently conquered territories, these are just numbers, and any rebels are more than enough for our mercenaries to mop up. The year is now 1496. We have finished off Iberia, minus Lisbon itself. Portugal ended up moving their capital to the New World, so we couldn't get enough war score to take Lisbon by sieging it alone. We were in our final two wars against France and England, with the goal of finishing off France and taking as much as we could from southern England. This would put us a couple of provinces over the requirement for the achievement. I don't have the footage, but we also declared a couple more no-CB wars on the Pope and Savoy, just to clean up Italy a bit more. And there you have it. August 27th, 1498. We have 425 of the 475 provinces required to form the Roman Empire. If we check the Steam page, we see that I indeed obtained the achievement. Now, how is the state of our country? Well, once we declared our last no-CB war, I was able to throw all of my admin and diplo towards getting to stability zero and war exhaustion zero. I also deleted all of my mercenaries, bringing us over 100 ducats in monthly profit. As you can see, we are making over 300 ducats in income from our aelits thanks to influence ideas, Alhambra, and the Ottomans' third unique government reform. All of our aelits are loyal, and with Divert Trade Power active, making Constantinople the richest trade node in the game, and we can probably move our primary port to Genoa later for even more trade income. Now for the negatives. We still have the Peasants' War disaster ticking away, some slight overextension, and rebellions about to fire. We are also in debt to the tune of over 54,000 ducats, and we are paying 180 ducats a month in interest while sitting at 27% inflation. However, none of these are insurmountable. In a little bit, I will be posting a part 2 to this video, where I will repair my economy, absorb most of my aelids, and set the Ottoman- Hey, if you liked this video, please consider subscribing and giving it a like. This was my first YouTube video, and I'd like to do more with this channel, mostly focusing on Paradox games and the gameplay and history surrounding them. Also, let me know what you would like to see more of, between achievement guides, nation reviews, and explorations of some of the history of the countries represented in EU4. If I can get to 5,000 subs before EU5 is released, I'll put out a massive review and critique of EU4. Take good care of yourselves, and best of luck in the wars to come.